there everyone, so glad to be back after a short little break there that I took off for a couple weeks for the Microsoft Power Platform Conference that was in Orlando. Just want to do a quick shout out to everyone that follows me on this channel that I was able to meet in person at that conference. It was a great event and I loved meeting you all. Now today I'm going to talk about the Power Platform Hub. So if you're rolling out the Power Platform and anyone that's really rolled it out successfully at scale, they foster an internal community and they make sure that all of their makers and people using the platform have the tools and resources and guidance they need. So what this Power Platform Hub does is provide us with a SharePoint template that has a bunch of pre-built guidance for a Power Platform rollout. So it's going to have best practices for showing your environment strategy, governance, as well as fostering your internal community. It's a really cool template and I want to make sure to walk you through what it looks like and how to set it up. So I'll walk through that right after this. So before we dive in, everything that you need to be able to set up and configure this Power Platform Hub is available here on Docs. So I'll provide a link to this documentation in the video description so that you can follow along and set this up inside of your tenant. So let's just take a look at what the Power Platform Hub looks like once you set it up. So I already installed this inside of my SharePoint environment. So you'll get a SharePoint site like this with a nice Power Platform logo there called Power Platform Hub. And you'll see it has a lot of stuff baked in and built out for us. So we have the homepage here with an embedded Yammer feed if you have Yammer communities. We have links to things like success stories, champion of the week, upcoming Power Platform related events that you might have. And if we go up here to the top, we see all the different sections we have. So we have a clear section for getting started because again, the goal that we have here is to make sure that we have a one-stop shop for any maker inside of your community to be able to get what they need to build on the Power Platform. We see we have just a simple template with some filler text. So it's meant to get you about 80% of the way there of what you need to set up your own custom hub for Power Platform inside of your organization. So you can fill out this section here with what you need. All these pages are customizable. So we can just go into the edit button here and we can fill out this getting started page with stuff that's relevant to your organization. Now in the help and learning tag, if we go there, we have some guided learning that's built in. So this is what I love about this Power Platform Hub. It has some built-in guidance and documentation and learning resources for you. So you don't have to go curate some basic Power Platform learning inside the template. Now, I like how it separates it out between beginner, intermediate, and advanced learning. So no matter where your makers are coming from and their knowledge of the Power Platform, you have some guided learning for them to get started. So all of these, like one of my favorite things to talk about is the UI. So we can click on any of these and it's going to link out to Microsoft Learn. And of course, again, this is all customizable if you have anything extra that you'd like to add in here. So other things that we'll notice here in the help and learning tag is a page for consultation and development. So again, this is following a lot of the best practices that are shown in the center of excellence for nurturing your internal community, but making sure that you have some documentation or spot people can go where if they want some help or stuck on something where they can get some support, or maybe they have an idea that they want to share for a process they want to automate or whatever it might be. This is the intention of this page. For internal communities, you can do something as simple as linking to Yammer communities, or maybe you're using Microsoft Teams, whatever it might be, to have those kind of ad hoc conversations. And then we have the support page here where you can list out who's managing your Power Platform environment and who they should go to if they need to escalate any issues. Now this Power Platform at section, so you see it's at Fourth Coffee Company, which is the name of my tenant. So it's automatically going to pull in the name of your company for this section. And this is where you can get into the weeds about specifically within your organization, what are your specific policies for the Power Platform? So things that you'll want to call out here that the template has for us is your environments. So we can go here and it will give us some pre-built information that we can just tweak to our needs. So it gives us a bunch of information about environments as a whole and their purpose. And then you'll go into details of what specific environments do you have in your organization. So we all have the default environment and hopefully you know the default environment is for personal productivity. So we often rename that to personal productivity. So you can list out the purpose of the environment and what should be done in that environment here. 
and then any other environments that you have. You can have a section for custom environments and how one goes about creating custom environments and what restrictions you might have in place at your company. There's a section for Dataverse for Teams environments and how you choose to manage those and developer environments and practices for deleting unused environments. So if you have some kind of automated practice where if an environment isn't used in a set period of time or something that you want to enforce, this is where you would list out what your policies are. If we go back up to the tab here, we have another section for data loss prevention policies. So you want to be clear and communicate to all of your makers what data loss prevention policies that you have in each of your environments. So this will provide you with some out of the box information here on what data loss prevention policies are so that your makers can be aware of that, as well as going into the weeds per environment, which specific policies that you might have. There's another placeholder here for moving resources. So what are your policies for moving solutions between environments? So it just gives a little bit of information about what solutions are and how they're used to move stuff between your different environments. And then finally in this section, a page for requesting a premium license. Next, we have news and success stories. And this section is all about nurturing your community and providing a way to highlight them and the stuff that they're building. So in the success stories page, this is where it's using the news capability of SharePoint to be able to highlight different stories. So just like the PowerCat team puts out those great customer stories on the Power Platform blog there, you can do the same thing within your internal community. So we have one example in this template of what a success story would look like. So this page here would roll up all the success stories you have, and you can click on one of those and see the page template that we have for a success story. So this gives you an idea of what you might want to highlight in a success story, like a general overview, what the business scenario is, the impact and benefits, and maybe a solution architecture. On the champion of the week, this is just a great pattern that we've seen many organizations, again, who have success with the Power Platform do, is highlighting their individual makers. So we can see a roll up of the different champions, click and go to the page template that's provided for highlighting a champion. I really love this page template that they're using here. So we have an introduction, sharing about their journey, what they found challenging, maybe an overview of the app or project that they worked on and then some best practices that they might wanna share with everyone else in your organization. And finally, the next big piece of this template that it gives us is events. So we have two different pages for hackathons. So you can link out to a hackathon planning workbook and you can highlight your upcoming hackathons here. These are again, are another custom pages where you can describe what you're hacking, have a countdown timer for when the hackathon is and give a little bit more information about how to register and all of that. And then on the office hours, so that's another good practice to have to really foster an internal community in addition to ongoing training through hackathons, being able to have office hours where people can go to to bounce ideas around, ask questions and all of that. So this is a page where you can see all the upcoming office hours and even highlight if you record your office hours, those video recordings. So this is something from now on that anyone that I know that's rolling out the Power Platform, I'm gonna be recommending they do, right alongside installing the Center of Excellence Toolkit and all that, one of the very first steps they should do is roll out this Power Platform hub. And even if you already have some kind of hub internally in your organization for Power Platform, go ahead and give this an install somewhere and just see if there's any ideas that you can borrow from it because it's really well put together. So shout out to Daniel, Manuela, and Steve for their great work on this Power Platform hub. Now, as I mentioned earlier, all the information that you need to be able to set it up is here on Microsoft Docs. So just a few things I wanted to point out about the setup. It does require PowerShell. And you'll download the assets here, which will give you a zip file. And in the zip file, you have two different PowerShell scripts. You have a readme and then the actual template here. There are some prereqs to install the Power Apps Administration PowerShell, which there's all these steps that you need here provided for you to do that. And then also PNP PowerShell. So that's Patterns and Practices PowerShell, which is an add-on to actually allow us to be able to take that template and install it inside of your SharePoint environment. So I obviously ran through this myself. All the documentation is very clear. It accounts for any potential issues that you might run into. Make sure that you have the necessary permissions. First of all, you run it as administrator. You have those prerequisites installed. You update the script accordingly. I'm just replacing some of the default values with your tenant name. 
And the only issue I really ran into was an execution policy issue. So it's pretty simple to resolve. And they have documentation right here in the docs page on how to resolve that and how do you change your execution policy to be able to run the script correctly. So that's really all there is to it. I will provide a link to this docs page so you can download the hub. I hope that you download it and give it a try. And I'd love to see what you think about it when you install it and if you use it in your organization. So drop me a comment, tweet me on Twitter, shoot me a message on LinkedIn, and let me know if you try it and what you think. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Oh wait, before you go, check out some of these other videos that I have on the Power Platform.